All right, best and worst gear from my Pacific Crest Trail through hike. I will have a link to all this gear in the description, even the worst gear, so you can buy it if you wanna spite me. We're gonna start with the best gear, obviously, because we always save the worst for last. Everybody knows the saying, the first, best piece of gear is my freaking Nightcore NU25 headlamp, which I'm sure a lot of you watching are familiar with. I've talked about it in lots of other videos. I'm just gonna say it. If you're not using this headlamp while you're backpacking yet, you are an idiot. For real, this is the, it's the, it's gotta be the best backpacking headlamp, dude. I swear to freaking God. First of all, it's super ultra light. That matters. Of course, we love to save some weight. It's a really lightweight headlamp. You can do that goofy ass like headband mod if you want to save even more weight. I didn't really even bother and it's still light as hell, so who cares? And not only is it light, but it also just works really well. It's super, super bright. It has three different settings. That's two. Uh it has three different like brightness settings for the main lights. The middle one is like the sweet spot when you're kind of just like moving around your campsite a little bit, you need some extra light. The high one is like super bright. So if you're like really trying to look at that freaking, that animal that's off in the distance in your campsite and it's freaking you out, you can use that. And then the low setting is perfect for if you're just kind of around camp, like cleaning up after dinner or after you're done whacking off or something. And then it's also got the old red light. So if you roll up to camp in the middle of the night and you don't want to be that guy, that that just shines his light everywhere like oh hey guys i'm here to camp you don't want to be that guy it's got the red light so you know you can be a little bit more courteous it's just a great it's just a great headlamp i know they just came out with a new version of it that's like a little bit lighter and i think maybe a little bit brighter a couple other differences i haven't really looked into it too much but that's an option as well potentially but i can certainly vouch for the normal one that the nightcore nu25 go buy this freaking headlamp if you haven't already link do it. The second best piece of gear from my PCT through hike is my Plex Solo. And I almost didn't include this one because z -Pack sent it to me like halfway through the hike. And I know that I'm just a big shill at this point, but I I'm not gonna lie, like it was a great tent. I really, it was an absolute pleasure setting that thing up every single night. And it was also pleasurable once I was inside of it. Same thing could be said about your, I can't, it's just too much. It's just too much. First of all, it is like the lightest tent on the market, basically, uh, you know, besides just using a straight up tarp. It's really easy to set up. I didn't even have the right amount of tent stakes for it, and I was still able to set it up super easily every single night. The only thing I didn't like about this tent was the zipper broke just a little bit. The mesh kind of ripped there shortly after I first started using it, which is a little bit of a bummer. z -Packs isn't exactly known for having like the most robust, rugged gear, but all I had to do was slap a little bit of tape on there. Thankfully, the rip was in a pretty easy spot to fix so it really wasn't that big of a deal i said this in a previous video but i am gonna do a full review of the z-pax flex solo tent as well as the gossamer gear the one tent both the tents i used on the pct so i will save the details for that video whenever it comes out probably in a month or two or something like that and the next best piece of gear this would be my shorts the running shorts that i was hiking in i think they're called the new balance accelerate. I started the PCT with a pair I had bought the previous year. I got to like mid Oregon. There was a couple holes in the ass. You know, I already have one of those. I don't need more. So because of that rip and also because, you know, anything's going to get worn out after that many hundreds and over thousands of miles, I decided to get a new pair of shorts. And of course I got the same exact pair because they were so good. They're so cheap. I chafed a little bit every now and then, but way, way, way less than I did on the Appalachian Trail wearing a different pair of shorts these shorts have a liner in them so you don't have to worry about bringing underwear you can just i mean you're not free balling it i was about to say free balling it free ball it i hope nobody heard that uh but you're, but you're not free balling you're there's a liner so you're it's all protected there. I, I'm, you guys know how, what am I talking about? They're a five inch inseam, which I guess it depends on the length of your legs. But for me, I found that's the perfect balance between, you know, not wearing like shorts up to like my junk basically, but also being able to show a little bit of thigh, you know, that's half the reason you guys are subscribed. It's cause I got some nice thighs. Oh. oh, they couldn't see the thigh there. But anyways, my favorite part about these shorts, hands down, the best thing about these shorts, definitely the pockets because so many running shorts that I've worn in the past don't have pockets. They might have like a tiny little key pocket somewhere, but they don't have like full on pockets where you can like fit your phone and a bunch of meth and stuff like that. And that's actually the whole reason why I bought these shorts in the first place is because I was like, when I'm backpacking, I want pockets, but I also still want shorts that are short enough and have the liner and are comfortable. The 
I'm telling you, these shorts literally check every single box for me. So if you have a penis and balls and you want to buy some running shorts for hiking or for running too, I use them for running too, definitely check out these shorts. Link in the description. All right, the last best piece of gear. Oh, and by the way, guys, if you're not subscribed to the channel, do that. I'm gonna scale it back a little bit and say I wanna give this channel to 50,000 subscribers. When I get to 100,000, maybe go backpacking with a camp chair. But if I get to 50,000, comment below what my motivation for getting to 50,000 subscribers should be. And if it's funny and not too humiliating, I'll do it. My sleeping pad, the Thermarest NeoAir X-Lite. However, this one's a little bit of some bullshit to be honest, because the, the pad that I have is like old. I bought it in 2020. You guys remember that year? What a great year that was. And I had used it quite a bit before the PCT. I used it on my Northfield Placid Trail through hike. I used it on a bunch of other stuff. Every time I went backpacking between 2020 and the PCT in 2022, I used this sleeping pad. And so I thought for sure when I started the PCT, that pad was gonna pop at some point. I, I even thought about including like a running joke in the videos where I have my viewers bet on like how long it's gonna take before my pad pops. And dude, that thing never popped. It, it doesn't make any sense to me because my hiking partner Flossie also was using the same pad but he had the newer version which is a little bit different I don't know all the differences but I know the newer pad has a different valve I'm sure there's some other differences too but whatever those differences are clearly something's up because Flossie went through I think two pads he swapped at least one pad that was deflating and then he got another one and then by the end of his hike, that one was also deflating. And Flossie is very, very careful with his gear, like way more careful than I am. And so I'm really surprised that he basically wore through two pads and I still have the same one I've been using for over two years now. It just doesn't make any sense. But I can't argue, it worked for me. I got great sleep on that pad. It, it's absolutely trashed right now. It looks like somebody smeared feces all over it and I'm gonna use it till it pops, so that's all right, let's talk about the worst gear now. I'm gonna start with this one because it's not gonna surprise any of you because I've talked about it in a lot of videos now. The first worst piece of gear from my PCT through hike, that's a mouthful, is my Gossamer Gear tent. The one, again, we're gonna cover this way more, but long story short, it just wasn't very good in the rain. Seam wasn't sealed properly. It just, it sags when it's, it's cause it's still nylon when you set it up. I don't know, wasn't crazy about that tent. The one good thing I'll say about that tent cause I've been just shitting on it in like all my videos recently. The headspace is pretty good in that tent. It's definitely a little bit better than the z tent because there's two poles on the Gossamer Gear tent and there's only one pole on the z tent and it comes down like this. And so your head right here, you know, it's, it's the, the, so, so that part was good, but honestly, yeah, I wasn't crazy about the Gossamer gear tent. And that's all I got to say about that. The second worst piece of gear that I use on the PCT, um, and this is one I should have seen coming, and I'm pretty sure somebody commented about this on my PCT gear video before I started the trail, but the second worst piece of gear was my Polycro ground sheet that I started with. I had never used any ground sheet before the PCT. And so when I realized I should probably get one to use with the Gossamer Gear tent, naturally I was like, bitch, I want the lightest shit possible. And that just so happened to be the Polycro option. I thought about Tyvek, but I was like, nah, I will go with the Polycro. And that shit lasted about three weeks maximum before it was torn to shreds. And to be fair, I was also using it as like a sit thing. When I, when I would stop for lunch or something, I'd like put out the ground sheet and then sit on it and lay on it and stuff. So it wasn't just being used as my tent footprint, but it was getting torn up. It just wasn't doing the trick. Now there is a little caveat to this. I think that if I was doing like weekend backpacking going forward and I needed a ground sheet for that, I think the Polycro would be okay. Because like I said, it, it didn't wear out in like three days, it wore out in like three weeks. And so because it is the lightest option for a ground sheet, I think I would still use it for shorter weekend hikes. But for a through hike, especially one as long as the PCT, nah man, Tyvek is the way to go. When I got to Wrightwood, California, I bought Tyvek. And I didn't look back until I swapped the tents. Once I got the Z-Pax tent, I got rid of the the ground sheet and then I didn't have to worry about it after that, but you know. The third worst piece of gear from my PCT hike, and this one might be a little bit surprising. My trekking poles, the Cascade Mountain Carbon Fiber Tech, I think. The reason I bought these poles is because they are the most 
affordable poles that also are like pretty good quality. I don't regret choosing these poles. I think I had some pretty sound reasoning, but I just don't think they're the best poles for like a long distance through hike. Again, for like a weekend or like a shorter through hike, even, you know, a couple weeks or whatever, I think these poles are fine, but on a trail as long as the PCT, you're gonna wear out the tips on your trekking poles at some point. When I was on the Appalachian Trail, I used Leckies and then I proceeded to shit all over them a few years later, but I'm not gonna lie, I'm kind of rethinking that, kind of regretting that a little bit. On the AT, I could swap the tips once they got worn out, but I'm pretty sure on these Cascade Mountain Tech trekking poles, you can't swap the tips. And so I went through two pairs of trekking poles on this hike. They cost about 60 bucks each, so say roughly $120. And if I had been using maybe Leckies or maybe even another pair of trekking poles that you can change the tips on, I wouldn't have had to buy a whole new pair like I did with the Cascade Mountain ones. I would have just had to swap the tips, which would have been a lot less expensive than buying a whole new pair. I'm sure I maybe saved a little bit of money still, but I don't think I saved as much money as I thought I was by buying these cheaper poles because I didn't think about how you can't replace the tips on those trekking poles. Unless I'm just mistaken about that. Comment if that's the case, but I'm pretty sure you can. And so there were a lot of things I liked about the poles. They never snapped on me. They never like broke or anything like that. I just didn't like how the tips would wear out pretty quickly. Not even, I was using them a lot, but I just don't like how you can swap the tips. And the other thing I don't really care for on those poles is the straps. They're just not very easy to adjust. And when you do adjust it into the right position, it tends to slip out of that position like almost instantly. The tracking poles were all right. I'm gonna use them going forward just because I have another pair and they're they're fine, but long-term, I'm definitely looking for a better solution. So if you have them, leave them in the comments. And the final worst piece of gear for my through hike. This one might surprise you guys, I'm not gonna lie. This was my shoes. The Ultra Olympus 4s. And the reason this might be surprising or maybe it's not surprising actually because a lot of people were complaining about these shoes on the PCT, but these are like one of the most popular shoe out there. Probably second most popular, purely based on my anecdotal observation next to also Ultra, the Lone Peak. I do like the Olympus better than the Lone Peak because it has a lot more cushion. And honestly, I kind of have a love-hate relationship with this shoe. Let's talk about what I do like about these shoes real quick. I like the cushion. As I just mentioned there, they do have a lot of cushion. I like the wide toe box, like they do fit my feet pretty damn well. They are very comfortable. They just are a comfortable shoe, okay? So you might think, isn't that the most important thing? Like, why would you shit on these shoes and say that they're the worst piece of gear of the whole hike if they're comfortable? Let me explain. Honestly, these shoes just wear out so fast. On the Appalachian Trail, I did not wear these shoes. I wore the La Sportiva Wildcats. I went through three full pairs and like a quarter of the last pair. I can't even remember how many freaking pairs of the Olympuses I went through on the PCT. That's how fast these things wore out. It was ridiculous. These things were only lasting about 300 to 400 miles, which just, when you're on a long through hike like this, that just doesn't cut it. I was not the only hiker having this problem as well. I talked to tons of other hikers who were wearing these shoes that were just like fed up with how fast these shoes were wearing out. And there's another few reasons why I don't like them either. The price, they're $180. Although the new ones are gonna be a little bit different because the fours are discontinued now. They're expensive shoes. They wear out fast and they're expensive. So I ended up spending like tons of money on my freaking shoes. And not only that, another reason why I was spending more money on my shoes, the last thing I really don't like about these shoes is while they are cushiony and they are pretty comfortable, the insole that comes with these shoes and also the Lone Peaks suck. Ultra, what are you doing, dude? What do, what, what do you think with the stupid insoles? It's like I paid like $180 for these shoes and then you're gonna give me an insole that's thinner than the piece of paper I printed my PCT permit on. It drives me insane. And so I would end up not only having to buy the expensive shoes, but I would also buy insoles, which also could be a little bit expensive. So I was spending like over 200 bucks on each pair of shoe. I uh, really regret that, honestly. I wish I had put more thought into my shoe choice on the PCT. And that begs the question, why didn't you switch? Why did you do this over and over? And the reason was because I was too scared to switch shoes in the middle of the through hike because while they were wearing out quickly and they were expensive as shit, my feet did feel pretty good in these shoes. Because of that, I was just afraid to switch in the middle of the through hike. I have one more pair left, which I'm gonna be using for the rest of that pair's life. But then after that, I definitely wanna get a different trail so if you have any suggestions, preferably not Ultra, let me know in the comments what the trail runner I should try next is. Ultra, you gotta get it together, dude. Come on, 